The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis, and welcome to the show for TFNN today. And today we are broadcasting from Churchill Downs, where we're going to bring you the Kentucky Derby. And we're going to start the race right now. Here we go. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it. Ah, uh, shucks. Well, shucks, boys and girls. That <laughs> that didn't... Oh, dear. What happened? I really... <laughs> oh, man. I don't know if anybody can hear me or not. I guess not. I really messed this one up. <laughs> oh, man. Don't ever let an Italian... Ah, uh, shucks. Don't ring it. I'm coming back. Don't worry. Let that be a lesson to you, folks. Don't ever, ever let an Italian try to do anything technical. I am going to post this thing in here for those of you that want to listen to it. It's really quite funny, but it goes through and it tells all the horses and it ends up getting it to the very end. And the winner is, and there's a horse on the outside, and the winner of the race is... Uh, no one frickin' knows was the name of the race, and uh, it is really quite funny. Anyway, if you get a chance, listen to it. If you like horse racing, it's really done well. Okay, uh, folks, this is why I only do one thing. I do one. Th I do one thing well, and. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes I don't even do that. Hey, someone asked a question about the uh, one-day trading thing that I'm going to do a week from today. Uh, but boys and girls, I do something really simple. I repeat over and over again. It's boring as heck, but that's what I do. Here's the S&P. This is the last few days. Now, some, almost every morning when I come in, I give you these numbers that I'm looking at uh, in the den here. I don't show you exactly where they're coming from, but if you look at this market from the 8th, you'll see we made a big ABCD pattern up there at 20. 2950. That was a 61% retracement on the whole range. Uh, and then you'll notice that you see the two black lines there that repeated. That's nothing more than an ABCD Gartley. And then you see yesterday when we were in here, I said, be really watching 2872. And the reason why that was important because that was a 382 rally and it was also the same rally that we had during the 11th and the 12th, it was repeating over and over again. And now you see we got down to 27.77. And if you uh, defied human nature and looked at all these things, A, B, C, D on the downside, you're going to see that there's a, a relatively strong probability that we might make 27.50 today or tomorrow, of course, being Thursday. And then tomorrow, was this is going to be interesting if you understand this, after Thursday is followed by Friday. And Friday, we have a special guest, Jeff Hughes from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Hedge fund manager and an incredible technician will be our guest tomorrow at uh, 930. So that's what I basically do. I follow a whole bunch of markets. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But like in uh, the movie, uh, <coughs> hold on, City Slickers, I'm like Curly. I do one thing and I do one thing well. And that's, uh, and, I, and I know I do that well. Fact is, uh, years ago, I, I, what I wanted to do for this program was to make it, you know, a money back guarantee that if we didn't make money that day, that uh, they didn't have to pay anything. But uh, I was outvoted three to two on that one, so or two to one, so uh, not a problem. Mark Douglas and I used to do a seminar every two years in Chicago, where we had uh, ten traders there. It was five thousand dollars for a whole week. And we held it on top of the building there where Mark uh, lived there on Lakeshore Drive. And um, we had the whole business section. It was really cool. We had a lot of fun. And on one of those meetings, we had a uh, uh, we had three of those. And in the last one, this is where the hockey players were. This was in 90, <clears throat> 99. And uh, we had had an incredible week. We had to make money every day. Uh, or they got their money back, and we had had an incredible week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we were just uh, doing really good. But Friday, we were having a little too much fun, 
and I had a couple of bad trades back to back. Hold on, someone's asking me a question. Uh, okay, um, <clears throat> and uh, what what happened was uh, we were down a little bit, and uh, it was really close. We were maybe 100 bucks lower, and they, everybody was joking about it. Say, oh, please lose, please lose, then we don't have to pay. I don't know if they were kidding or not, but we were having a lot of fun. But we had planned for lunch that day at uh, – Rodidi's, which is the Greek restaurant on the south side of uh, Chicago there on, on Halstead Street. I don't know if it's still there or not. I don't think it is. I think a building has been put in its place. But we went there for lunch, and uh, we'd had to trade on We were in an S&P. It was going back and forth. This is when the S&P was, you know, $500 a point. And it was, you know, back and forth, back and forth, one point, two point. And the money supply was coming out at uh, 1 o'clock Chicago time, and we just got into Rodidi's. The market's closed at 2. So we were barely, uh, barely, barely profitable, and the money supply came out. We didn't have cell phones or anything like that, so I, I went to excuse myself. And there were there were about 15, 16 people there at the table, and I walked over to the back, got onto a payphone, and I checked to see what the money supply was, and it was really, really negative. And the S and P had dropped about eight points, which was a lot back in those days, and it ended up being a, a really good day. So. Anyway, that's why I don't do that anymore. Hold on. Someone's asking a question here. Let's see if I can get the answer. The updated Bitcoin chart. No, I do not. I didn't get that this morning. I usually get it uh, every morning, but I didn't get it today. So that's uh, the main thing uh, I wanted to mention about that Bitcoin. The Bitcoin is acting incredibly bullish, folks. Uh, if you remember yesterday, we talked about the fact that it hit 10,000. It backed off to 8,000 and immediately went back above 9,200. I don't know where it is right now. But uh, that was a 382 retracement, folks, to the tick from 10,000 to, you know, we went from 4,000 to 10,000 back to 8,000. That was exactly 382. It took two days to do it. And now it's giving it, you know, it's taking it all back. So that's not a bad sign. That's a, that's a very good, uh, very good thing to look at, I believe. So let's run through. Oh, we got a first break coming up already. Hey, if you like horse racing, uh, make sure you listen to that link because it is funny. It is just flat out funny. And I, whether it's true or not, I don't know. But one thing I do know, I don't think anybody really does know what's going on. And there's so many conspiracy theories about it that, uh, wow, it uh, brings the uh, your brain power to its fullest when you have to think about that stuff. So let's keep in mind that it's, it's, only, <clears throat> it's only money, folks. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Larry Pesavento is hosting a special event Thursday, May 21st from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Trade What You See, a live trading event. 
For the first time in over 10 years, Larry will host a live event where you'll watch over his shoulder as he trades the markets live. You'll see how he organizes his trading day, the times most likely to generate a signal, what outside information he ignores, and more importantly, what he does not ignore, and much more. Larry will trade the markets in real time, including the Euro US dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, the Dow, and E-mini S&P, crude oil, gold, treasury bonds, wheat, and soybeans, and more. When you sign up, you get a month of his daily newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7 included. For all the details on Larry Pesavento's live trading event on Thursday, May 21st, and to sign up today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we were going to play the race here, but there's a little bit of a raciness at the very end of it where he says, and the winner is no one frickin' knows, and he doesn't use the word frickin'. He used something else, and I'm afraid that if that happens, Al and I would be out picking tomatoes over in Yuba City, so uh, we better not play it, but it is quite funny anyway, so take a listen to it if you get a chance there's a trade that's coming up folks you might want to i'm not you know I, it's not my job here you know to give you trades i try to give you some ideas that's the best i can come up with and even some of that doesn't work very much it's only probability based but here's one from one of our friends over across the pond that we received uh, yesterday and then again early this morning you'll notice here that this is a, a, Brit, a chart of the british pound uh, this is an hourly chart, you know, so it covers the last seven or eight days. You can see we're making a three drive to a bottom down here. So if you're interested in the British pound, you might want to take a look at that just for kicks and giggles. All right, folks, I have a, a, a mem we're going to go down memory lane here just a little bit. I want to show you a couple things. There's a chart that, that's been surfacing on the Internet, and I want to bring it up to you because everybody seems not everybody. There are a few people talking about it. This is the SPS comparison between 2008 and also where we are now. You'll notice they all three of them had one similarity, and that is they each made a 61% retracement. We did that in 2000 and, and uh, in 2000. We did it again, of course, and this was in uh, October of 2007. We did it again, and then we had it just last week here in the S&P, if that's the case. Now, this was very important to me because... Back in those days, I remember it very well because I was trading with a young man that I had met in 2003. His name was Tom Hugard, also known as Trader Tom. And if you'll notice that top green dotted line there, that was the three, the 61% retracement that we were looking at the first time, okay? And that's when we really started to put a position on. And you'll notice here the second dotted line when it broke that. Uh, and broke really, really badly. And you'll notice that blue blue arrow right there. Gosh, do I remember that day. That was uh, September the 20th. It happens to be Tom's birthday. And we had been piling onto this thing, and it was looking really good. And then we had this big, massive rally. And once we went back above that green line, uh, we covered and then waited for that green line to hit, uh, that arrow hit, which was on his birthday, which was an exact 61% retracement. And from then on, boom, down she went. And uh, that's when Tom was working for City Index. He was his their point man. He was on uh, Bloomberg and uh, CNBC. And uh, he uh, ended up changing his whole career uh, at that time and became a uh, you know, a uh, pretty, pretty big legend, if not only in his own mind, but he is a legend. Anyway, that's really what we were doing. And, you know, I, that's the type of thing that, uh, you know, I, I kind of remembered the fact that it happened to be his birthday, which happens to be also my mother's birthday. Okay, folks, this is basically a very sad day for me. I lost one of my very dear friends on May 14th, 1998. Oh, Blue Eyes himself, Frank Sinatra. Frank and I were very, very close. I don't talk about it very much, but uh, we were together inseparable when he was not doing the movies. I mean, my goodness, I saw him on an elevator once. I saw him one time at the Santa Anita racetrack, and I saw him again at... Uh, 
a restaurant in Beverly Hills. So we were really tight. I mean, you know, seeing him three times in all those years. He never did quite get my name correctly, and I don't think he ever spoke to me. But in my mind, I thought that he did. So that's about as close as I ever got to old Blue Eyes himself. And the reason why I remember that, it happens to be another birthday in the family that I remember. So that's why it was uh, quite funny. Anyway, Let's talk just a little bit about something that I think is relatively important. I showed you the DAX, and I, I'm gonna, now I'm going to show you the FTSE. These markets, folks, they are heading down. I don't know why they're heading down, but they are heading down. And how far they're going to go down, I don't know. But you can see here on this chart, we had a three drive to a top pattern, just about spot on, perfect. The move down, the exact ratio up to the 61% retrace. And you can see the ABCD here is down about another 700 points, which is about 15% in the FTSE if it's going to do that. Now, is it going to do that? I don't know. But the good thing is, folks, nobody else does either. So let's pay uh, very, very close attention to it. If you remember when I started the show about that S&P 500, I want to get this up here to show you that, you know, when you're looking at things, repeat what happens the next day. You notice that these lines that are here, these dark lines, the downtrending lines, the first one stopped at the 382 yesterday at 2872 last night, the high. Uh, came here late, late, late yesterday afternoon, came in at uh, 28, uh, 28. That was the exact to the tick 382 retracement from the high uh, intraday, which was at the, you know, at the 28 to 72 level. So these numbers repeat over and over again. And if you did the ABCD on this, and if you did the ABC on this, it's going to take you to 2750. So 2750 is going to be a really key number for two reasons. One, this is Thursday. We're in a down week so far. Tomorrow's Friday, the last day of the week. If we close below 2750 uh, on Friday, we're only we're not very far away from that. So if we close below 2750 on Friday, you do not want to be long stocks coming into next week. Uh, that's going to be a very, very, uh, very, very negative. That doesn't mean they can't rally, of course, because usually when I say that they do, but uh, that's going to be a very, very breaking of major, major support. So. Keep in mind that I think it's relatively important. One other one last night that did something exciting, and I don't know if you think it's exciting, but I certainly do, and that is this market for the crude oil. Let's get this up here, and you'll take a C. You can see me get a double top up here from the 7th of May. We made an ABCD. We made a beautiful three drive to a top pattern over the last three days, 12, 13, 14, and we sold off about a uh, thousand bucks uh, since that top was hit, and we're going to find out what it's going to do since that time, but right now that sets up a bearish bias in the uh, crude oil, uh, mainly for the, for the rest of the day. I think it's relatively important. Hold on, folks. I've got a Skype message that I must take because it's order-related. All righty, and that's it. Uh, okay. Oh, we're here. We got a little note from uh, Shane, and that is that the uh, this next week is the weakest day in the month of May statistically. So that's that's important for that 2750. And I believe we have a, a holiday is going to be on the 25th. That's when we're going to have uh, Memorial Day, which is going to be interesting to uh, take a look at, and we'll. Watch that. I believe that's what I think anyway. Hold on one second. We're getting a request. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, Z's asking, are you trading June, June crude or July? You can't trade, at least where I trade. Uh, they don't allow you to trade June and July. So I'm looking at the August contract. It's about a dollar difference than the July but it's uh, it, you know the patterns are still the same. But you have to trade the August. I mean, some of, some of you guys I know are able to trade June and July because they've already told me that, and I don't know why you're able to do that because you're breaking the CME rules. But these members at the exchange are do whatever they want sometimes. So like they do in politics, as they say. Okay, but that we're trading the August crude. That's what we're looking at. And you know the really good one to look at. Uh, Z is to look at the December Z because uh, it's got the largest open interest. I mean, after the uh, after the July, it's had a really good one. So, uh, no, it isn't August. That was July that you're looking at. That what the program, the, my charting package is different than the platform, and so that's why I have that. I have to do that. Then I switch over to look at the uh, price of the August, and if that's what you're going to look at. All right, let's take a little break. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. 
Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, uh, I've had, had a question, very interesting question, is about this chart that I posted on the crude oil, the 30-minute chart. This happens to be for uh, July crude oil. But the question is, on these triangles that you see here, you'll see the numbers of 1.19 and 1.18. Basically, what that is, it, it's measuring the distance between point A and point X, and that means it went up one point. A 119 percent, not 127, which we like to see, or 106, 1.618. That didn't happen. But if you'll look, you'll the fact that they repeated, which is very, very important. But look in the middle. Uh, I know it's it's a, you think it's a separating fly poop from pepper. But if you look at the middle number there, 1.41, that's the square root of two. If if you look at that number, that's very, very important, you know, from a Fibonacci standpoint. Now, that's why electricity runs the way it does. But that sets up a perfect uh, three drive pattern, folks. You have a higher, the first drive is 1.19, higher than the first drive, that's drive two. And drive three is 1.1a, higher than the second drive, and that is uh, exactly 1.414 of the uh, X to A move and 0.1. That's that's why those three drive patterns are so powerful, because you don't know what's going to happen at the end of there when it's trading at 2670. You have no, no clue. 
But if you if you sell it there and it goes a little bit higher, like 40 or 50 cents, which is around 400, 500 dollars, you flat know you're wrong. And then, uh, you know, that's different. But if you did that, you can see, you know, that it may, you know, it's already paid more than a thousand dollars on the downside. But that's what that means. And those numbers are basically determined. Those green uh, patterns here are in this Ensign software. They're called uh, Pesaveno patterns. Didn't want them to be called that, but that's what Howard and John wanted them called. So, uh, you know, basically, I can draw in a pattern, and it'll show me the exact ratio. Now, look at the look at the the bottom part at point C. You see, it's at 1.20. Look how close that is to 1.19 and 1.18. I mean, these these ratios repeat over and over again, and that's what you're looking for. Is you're looking to repetition. The, the the patterns are pretty good for predictive purposes. That's for sure. We know that they repeat over and over again, and uh, they're repeatable within uh, uh, within within probability. So that's what those patterns are doing. And I hope that answers the question. But uh, that's what I'm looking at when I'm watching some of these things. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the next one that I wanted to talk about, and that is the uh, gold market. I believe uh, we're getting ready. Hold on just a second here. Uh, i got another question coming in here. Um, okay, very good. Glad that was helpful. Okay, let's take a quick look here at this gold market, folks, because uh, like I said yesterday, uh, there's no, nobody as uh, bullish as a sold-out bear, and that was me. But I believe we've got a chance here for this gold to get up here a little bit higher, uh, about another 30 or 40 bucks, uh, up around 1755 to 1762, and then we're going to see, you know, what's going on. Actually, we've we've had a pretty good move here from the bottom down here at 1685, and then we had the uh, the real good, really good test here yesterday at 1710, and we got up to the 78% level last night at 1738. And if we can clear that, then we got a thing to move to the upside. If you're in the gold, I would uh, make sure you put your stop uh, at around that 1722 uh, level because that way you'd lock in a profit and then you don't have to worry about uh, whether the market's going to go up or down. That's, uh, that's for sure. So I hope that helps a little bit also. All right. Uh, any, anybody, anybody has any questions? It's 877-927-6648. And I'll be trying to ask, uh, answer those if I possibly can. All righty. Now we have a question about the commodity markets. I want to get this up here to uh, show you what I think is happening. And, folks, there's some real serious stuff going on in some of these markets. They are really beating up uh, the corn market. Uh, you know, there's just nobody wants to. Let's just get this up here. So the folks, I, you know, I, we tried the corn once. It didn't work. I'll try it again when I have some type of an idea. And I've switched the operation into the uh, Christmas corn. And uh, hold on a second. Marshall is asking if uh, Sarah and I are eating out. Uh, we actually, we've ordered in a few times. Uh, yesterday, Marshall, we went down to the Cowtown Steakhouse. It finally opened up. There were only about five customers in there. And I got my favorite chicken fried steak, which I hadn't had in eight weeks. And I took it home and we, uh, we ate that. But there's a few restaurants that are opening now. But uh, and a few and a few other places, the gyms are opening, the health clubs and stuff like that. But uh, most of the stuff is pretty pretty tight. They're using about 90 percent of the people are still wearing masks. There are a few people that don't. But uh, we've had very little trouble here in Tucson as far as deaths or anything like that. I think in the whole state of Arizona, we only lost like 384 people uh, out of uh, 8 million. So that's a that's a very very small amount. So a lot of a lot of like that horse racing thing said. There's a lot of discrepancy of what we hear is going on and what is going on. But stop and think, folks, whether this is a is true or not. To have an event like this with a, with a population of 7.5 billion people on the planet and shut the whole thing down in a matter of two or three weeks, man, if it's a conspiracy, it's the best one that's ever been perpetrated, if it in fact is, and no one knows if that's the case or not. But, you know, you got Dr. Fauci on the, on the tube there, and if you listen to what he said before, a few months ago, he said that, uh, you know, masks were no good. And, you know, and, and, and when he started out in February, he said this was not going to be a big deal. And look what's happened now. OK, we're, we're a question here about the, uh, the natural gas. Uh, I am no longer in the natural gas. 
Uh, Mr. Z, natural gas uh, uh, passed me over, as they might say, in the gas market because uh, we went below the, that spot price of uh, one one seventy, and once we did that, you know, there were no support there anymore. And so, with the natural gas, we're just going to wait and see if it makes a triple bottom down here or not. There's just too many other things that are that are looking easier to trade. You know, that's uh, that's what I'm watching. So I I don't know if it's going to bottom here or not, but you know, Mr. Z, nobody else does either. So that's uh, what's what I'm watching. I'm just waiting on that to see what's happening. Oh, you want about the NASDAQ E-mini? I don't do the NASDAQ because that's the poor. <laughs> I thought that was a uh, I thought that was a G and not a Q. Sorry about that. But I don't do the uh, NASDAQ. I follow the chart, but I don't trade it because it's it's the uh, it's the high the hypochondriac of the of the indices. You know, there's so much in the spread sometimes. Yes, I have a chart on Netflix. I'll be happy to show you that. But I don't trade the uh, the uh, Nasdaq. I, I trade it once in a while, but not very often because it's easier. It's easier for me to uh, to look at the S and P because it's so predictable. I mean, well, the, the Nasdaq is too, but it has it has variances. The S and P goes to the 61 percent retracement, and the Nasdaq makes a double top. And the reason why is the Nasdaq is basically six or seven stocks. You've got Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Google, and uh, uh, and you know that's it. I mean, you know that basically is the whole thing. So uh, if I'm going to trade Nasdaq, the first thing I would do would be watch Apple and Microsoft because that's 20 percent and Facebook. Thanks, Mr. Bill. I forgot, but that's it. Okay. Question about the uh, Netflix. We'll get this up here, and what we'll do is we will talk about it when we uh, get back. I do not know if this is uh, this is as of two days ago. I don't know if Netflix has made a new high or not above 450, but uh, that's the chart of Netflix. You got the big ABCD up there, so who knows? We'll have to wait and see. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. 
Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, folks, so we've uh, been ob observing that the price of gold has started to move up. We're almost at the highs of last week. That's at 1745. We're trading around 1744 right, right now. So uh, if they can pop through that, it uh, looks like another $15 higher. That would make the profit of objective uh, ABCD up there in the gold. Uh, that's That happens to be the August contract, folks. I'm starting to look at the August. I'm still char char charting the June also, but I'm also looking at the August contract. So uh, that's going to be an interesting pattern to see if it uh, is going to be fulfilled. You'll notice the reasoning for the bullish uh, change from being bearish. We were bearish at 1762. We covered that at 1711. And uh, then we saw the three or higher bottoms coming in. Very, very important. And uh, that gives you that one, three, five pattern with the five coming in at the on the 10th, uh, excuse me, the 11th, which was uh, on Monday. And here we are four days later, and you see we've had a really good move here of about 40 bucks. And it looks like we're going to be heading possibly another $20 higher if we can clear this 1745. We haven't done that yet. And you can notice here back on the 7th and 8th, you see how it had that double top there at 1744, and then it backed off well over 40 bucks. Well, trust me, folks, I'm not going to set with a $40 hickey to see if I'm going to make the last 20. So what I would do on this one here, I would raise my stop to uh, 1736 and lock it in and uh, see what happens because uh, you don't want to let a big profit like that you know get away from you because sometimes it's harder to make some of these profits uh, a little more than you might like to have happen uh, one of the questions we had about Bitcoin I don't have an updated price but I do want to mention this uh, one more time because uh, John Jameson tells me this is the whole ball game uh, in the cryptocurrencies and that is uh, this chart that we're looking at here in Bitcoin this is a log chart going all the way back to 2012. I'm going to repeat this because I think it's that important. If you look at 2012, you see that blue box there. Remember, this is a monthly chart. Uh, that's where the halving started. We went sideways for about four months, and then the market took off. You can see the next halving that occurred in 2016. The market stayed there for a bit and then took off, and we had the second halving. The third halving came in uh, on the 11th, and uh, we've gone. We went up to 10,000, back to 8,000. Now we're at 9,000 and change. And uh, John believes this has got a chance to make 30,000. We will not have another halving in Bitcoin for another four years. It won't be till 2024. So I'm starting to follow these cryptocurrencies. There's five of them that I'm following. I'm going to be covering those on the uh, all-day session a week from today, and giving some thoughts of what we're looking at. John's uh, John Jameson's holding my hand on that one, and. And uh, we're going to be looking at some different currents, different cryptos and, and what they really mean. Okay, uh, the question someone is, why August, 14 days left in the June contract? Uh, there's 110,000 contracts, and August has uh, 7,100 contracts. That's because they're rolling those over. And they'll, they'll start to roll over. August happens to be one of the contracts that uh, we're looking. If you don't, if you don't use... If you don't use the August contract, I would imagine the next one would be September, but August had pretty good open interest, so we'll see. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm just telling you that's what I'm looking at. I'm trading August, so nothing else I can do. Uh, the, 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 the way you trade those, you have to find the exchanges that those cryptos are, are traded on. That's the, one of the key things. Folks, do you realize that there are 5,000 cryptocurrencies out there? 5,000 of them. And it, it well, I, I don't have time to go into it, but of, of those 5,000, there's about 50 that have a chance to, to, to hit it big. And uh, 
No, you know, Bitcoin is what, 87% of the market? Well, no, Bitcoin 67% of the market. Ethereum is about another uh, 15%. So 87% of the market is covered by, by cryptocurrencies. Uh, I'll disagree with you, Mr. G7, on silly cryptos. I don't, it's not about cryptocurrencies. It's about the blockchain. These, these people like J.P. Morgan and Stanley Druckenmiller and Ray Dalio and Paul Tudor Jones are putting money into these things. So, uh, you know, let's uh, – you know, and the, hey, the good part, some of them are only selling for – Ten and five cents, five and ten cents a share. Man, you can play. You can play big bucks on it. You can buy ten thousand shares for five hundred bucks. You can be a real player in that. If it goes to a dollar, you're rich. <laughs> so anyway, let's. Uh, we'll see what that. They are. They, the swings are good. We watch these swings. They trade just like all the others because you got some. They're trading. They trade twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. So uh, you see quite a bit. You see volume spikes and things like that. Uh, it is, Marshall, you're right. It is like buying penny stocks. But, you know, like you said, a pig in a poke. Wouldn't you have been nice to buy uh, Bitcoin for back in 2012 for 100 bucks a share? How about if you paid a dollar for it? I happen to know someone who used to work for, for me. And uh, Ace uh, is now, he well, he, he worked for... I should tell this story. Yeah, he, he worked for me, and then he had a job opportunity to go to work for Google. And uh, he was living in Southern California, and he had this – they interviewed about two or 300 people, and he was one of the three people that they hired to move up there uh, – to uh, do it. And his job was cryptocurrencies. And after about three or four weeks, he said, hey, I don't need Google to do this. I can do it myself. And so he was buying, he was buying uh, Bitcoin at under a dollar a share. And uh, folks, he made he made uh, <laughs> not only seven figures. He made mid seven figures. So he made a lot of money. He lives back in Sofia, Bulgaria, with his family. He bought a hospital. He bought a school, and uh, and still had a whole lot of money. Uh, you know, I ought to have Ace on the show. By golly, that's going to be one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to try to do that. We'll see if we can do that. Remember, folks, tomorrow we're going to have a new guest, Jeff Hughes, H-U-G-H, H-U-G-E, from Minneapolis, Minnesota, a friend of Rich Anderson. Hedge fund guy does really great chart work. I think you're going to like that stuff. So uh, we'll have him as our guest, uh, and we'll see what's happening. And then let's see, what do we have? We have something special. Oh, I have something special on the 18th, but that's regarding in, in Avery's birthday. Okay. Oh, on the 20th next week, on Wednesday, Hema Reddy. You know, the skinny on the E-mini will be our guest. So that's another one that are coming in and see what's going on. I know several people that have done very well. Uh, Trevor, Trevor, uh, Trevor Hot. What's Trevor's last name? Uh, he said he's a he works for uh, Reuters in London, and I met him through my friend Ollie. But he's a reporter there, and I met him about four or five years. Well, no, more than that, ten years ago, and he had bought some Bitcoin when it was really cheap, and when it got to eighteen thousand, he could buy a Rolls Royce convertible for his wife, and so he did, and he got out at eighteen thousand, and he still had money left over even after the. Uh, the uh, the thing he put up a thousand bucks and he cashed out for over three hundred grand in the uh, in the Bitcoin. So you'd like to hear those stories. Uh, I imagine there's a lot of horror stories that go on, but we'll have to you know wait and see you know how these things end up. We couldn't take out that that uh, double top in the uh, in the market. That's for sure because we backed off uh, just a few dollars. So we're going to see if that's going uh, to make it. We're making new lows now uh, in the S and P, folks. Uh, that new low. I'll, I'll just bring this up here really quick so you can see what I'm looking at. This is nothing mysterious, of course, but I'm just going to get this up here so we can all see it together and you'll be able to see what I'm looking at and we'll see if that's going to be the case. You'll you'll see where we are right now, and you'll be able to see where that uh, where that uh, pattern comes in that we're watching. So bear with me here, and I'll get this up here. We're looking at 2750 as a possible bottom here. Uh oh, that's not going to work. Just a second here. I'll be right back. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best. 
at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that is transforming into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we're making new lows now uh, in the S&P. Remember that 2750 is very, very important from my perspective because of the fact of, you know, where we're standing with these uh, – different things that are going on in the market with these uh, markets coming down to key support levels. So that's really uh, what we're paying very, very close attention to. So we'll find out if this is going to mean anything or not. But right now, it's still moving a little bit lower. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how it all ends up. That's for sure. The Treasury bonds have had a nice rally here. We rallied about three points, actually four points. And I still think we're in a uh, bear market in that. With uh, I don't believe we're going to see negative interest rates. We're starting to see people like Jerome Powell say that uh, he's not for negative interest rates. And, gee, why wouldn't he be? I mean, we never had these in the history of the world, but we have them in a few countries like Germany and France and a few other places. But they don't make any sense to me, folks. Uh, that's the bottom line. So just make sure you put stops on these things because, boy, when they fail. And when they fail, you don't want to be standing in front of that uh, freight train for sure. Uh, someone's asked a question about the, 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 the charts that I posted about the S&P. I'm going to post it again because all this is showing, folks, is the comparison between these different years, 2000, 2008, and where we are now. It's just showing that those markets had made FIB retracement. That's all it's showing. 
you know, that, that's the only thing that that chart is showing. The only similarity is there. The cycles are certainly different. You know, the reasons for the thing are certainly different. And uh, that's, you know, what we're watching. And fr frankly, folks, this thing about the, the virus, it's, uh, you know, it's, I don't know. I think there's things worse than death, and poverty happens to be one of them. So just, uh, you know, pray for the people that are old. Raise your hand, Larry. And uh, stay indoors and don't uh, bother anybody. And that's what I do. Sarah will not let me get out of the house. She even takes out the trash on Fridays now. So, boy, it's a good thing from my point of view, isn't it? All right, folks, we're going to see you on the flip side tomorrow with our first uh, shot at Jeff Huge. He's a hedge fund guy from Minneapolis, a good friend of Rich Anderson, and we'll be able to look at that. All right, 877-927-6648. We'll see you on the flip side. Music.